All right, I'm back. I did do some fiddling around with the uh, with the colors, but I didn't see anything I liked. So, yeah. Though there is one thing that we could do. We could use this. This is a thing we could use. If I make the paper width wider, it might not be so bad. That might be okay. What do you guys think of that? You? What do you mean, you? <laughs> you should iron that too. It's, uh, it's black construction paper. Scrivener lets you choose what texture you want. Where's that crackle coming from? Is that just me? Do you do people hear that? <laughs> I hear a mad crackle and I don't know what's from. Like seriously, that's really weird. Yeah, well, it's probably not being picked up on my mic. It's probably too soft. It's just really odd. Well, whatever. I'll find it later. I will figure it out later. I'll make a note though. Things things to look at later. Audio sync. Uh, zoom options. I think I'd really like like a 250. The 300 is a little too big and the 200 is a little too small. Colors maybe. And crackling. All right, the joys of being a streamer. Troubleshooting all the time. All right, so where are we going with this story? Where are we going with this? Can 
show my inspector. This is tan. Oh, excellent. I can have it off screen. That's good because I want my synopsis and all that. Perfect. That's super useful. Put words on the page, Bureau. Just put words on the page. One of the hardest parts about being a writer is this whole idea of self editing. It's like, that line's not great. <laughs> I freely admit it is not great. It could be great one day when it's all grown up. But at the moment, it's still fledgling. But part of it is just getting that stuff on the page. You can make it better. You can always make it better. But that just bogs you down, right? You just spend so much time trying to fix each individual line that you don't make any progress on the overall story. I think a lot of, a lot of art disciplines are the same in different ways. Crackle's gone. It's really odd. Hmm. 
No, it's all good, Erica. I'm used to people lurking. My stream is very much a... Uh, at least in part, I think my stream is not so much uh, a hangout, uh, though it is very interaction-based, but more so a, like, we all kind of just do work, and it's time f to do work together, I guess, in a way. Um, I mean, I appreciate everyone who's here, even all the lurkers and all that. Um, bring it out with me, you know. <laughs> it's all good, Robin. It's all good. I know Sam gets tons done on, when I'm streaming. <laughs> Whoop, sorry. It's just one of those things like being a writing streamer is really interesting because writing is such a niche thing for Twitch. Like there's lots of art streamers and there's plenty of really awesome ones. Um, oh yeah, why I should do a thing. Is this it? No, wrong. It's the other one. There you go. For those who don't know, Eric Cotton is a friend of mine who is a graphic designer and streams cool vector stuff. You should check her out. <laughs> but yeah, there's there's lots of really awesome artists, but art is carried very much about the visuals of it, right? Writing is not, but writing streaming is growing enormously. When I started, and it's been almost a year. It was like me. Um, there was a few people who streamed during the week. Uh, people like Wordwin and, and Bode and a few people. Um, then Eric Drayton got in the game and things started kind of exploding. And I apologize. I know Allison's here looking somewhere, uh, aka Smishmosh. I don't know when she started, but she was around when I started as well. But yeah, it's been rapidly expanding. The number of writing streamers has gone way up. There's a lot more people doing it. There's more people hanging out. Uh, I think Eric was saying last week that her Discord has like 400 people in it or something, which is insane. Like, I didn't believe her. Or maybe she just meant her entire like thing in, in general. Yeah, so like you were right before me because I started May 1st. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think 400 is accurate. <laughs> I think 400 might be like her total, all like all of her discords together and some other stuff, but that's what she told me. I don't know. Yell at her. Um... So yeah, I started like May 1st last year. So you would have started right before me, Allison. Yeah. Uh, since I'm doing things. For the record, Erica. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Her, uh, her Discord is super active, by the way. It is a lot of work. <laughs> yeah, no problem. Oh, and if you're looking for logline critiques, hit up Allison on Fiverr. <laughs> I have a Discord. <laughs> um, I think the last time I used it was four months ago.
I don't know. I like Discord a lot. I think it's very super useful. I think your community has to drive it though. And I just don't have it. <laughs> I don't have the community for that yet. Yet. I'll get there. It's all good. I mean, we've had this conversation before, Erica. We're saying like, you know, I do this for practice. I do this to get better. And I've noticed a note. I've noticed. I've seen a noticeable improvement over the last six months, um, especially of like being able to finish things, like getting things done, being able to be productive when I want to be productive and just stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. No, I hear you. And you're not the only person who does that. Um, I was watching Lynn Valin the other day and she has a subs only discord. Not like a subs only room, like only subs get her discord, which is cool. Like she wants a community like that and that's fine. I don't have any problem with that. Yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, it's a lot like Twitch in, in, uh, oh yeah, Z Lady Illusion. Cool. She, she streams at weird times for me, so I don't really get to see her all that much. I'm not really into water, like, I'm not really into painting, to be honest. <laughs> To a certain extent, I am, but I don't know. I'm not an artist. It's hard for me. <laughs> yeah, I agree. I think it did. Well, I mean, I would think that it really depends on how many subs you have, too, though, right? Like, for example, like if you had 100 subs and they were active in Discord, in a subs only Discord, that would probably be okay. But if you have like five subs, like that's a different thing. Oh, but I agree with you entirely. Um, I, I wouldn't want to exclude people, especially because the whole, well, <laughs> you're not an artist. I'm not a visual artist. Um, I know exactly what you mean about excluding people. Uh, and for me, that's definitely a thing that I've, that I try to do with, with, <laughs> I don't, ugh, that sounded wrong. I don't try to exclude people. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is that, you know, the, I'm not trying to monetize my channel. Uh, my YouTube's not monetized. It's all creative commons. Like I want people to learn. I want people, I want to learn from people and the more people that have access to that and the more people that, um, I can influence and can influence me, the better that goal will be accomplished. And putting up paywalls and all that is not the way to do that. It just isn't. So yeah, and uh, that's why I put up all my writing files on, on my website and all that. Like, see what a script looks like. See what my scripts look like. Decide if it's right for you. Um, figure things out, you know? Like the more information we have access to, the more we can learn. I do not, I do not exclude you, Robin, whatever. Yeah, for sure. I think, I think the channel currency is a fine way to do it. Um, Cause it kind of gives you that, like you have to be a regular but you don't have to be like there all the time or you don't have to be super ridiculous or anything. Yeah. See, I think that's fine. I just like, I'm really weird. Cause I just run my channel very differently from a lot of people. Um, mostly because a, I'm terrible at getting distracted and the less distractions I have, the better, <laughs> uh, and I mean, that, again, that depends on what you want your, your 
your cat stream to be, right? Do you want it to be a productive stream? Do you want it to be a really entertaining stream? Are you trying to find that balance? I mean, for a lot of my streams, it's it's a sort of a mix of us having a conversation like this, which I feel like is valuable or at least somewhat interesting. Uh, it is for me anyway. And uh, yeah, no, but like this is this is a conversation we're having. Like we're 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 to, having a discussion is not a distraction. I think having discussion is an important part of what we do. Um, I've talked a lot about this in different ways, but you know, understanding people and understanding how people think and discussing things and all that is is how you inform yourself as a writer. You know what I mean? Like, the better you understand different types of people, the more varied your characters can be. The more you can develop you and new and unique ideas of how they interact. Like that's that's the way I look at it. So this for me is not a distraction. This is this is how I grow, and that's important. That's important to me as a streamer and as a writer, as a creative person. Um. But yeah, but that like that that's all to say that the reason I don't have like a channel currency and I don't have like a lot of stream label stuff and all that is because that's just kind of constant interruptions. Um, and, it, and it sucks in a way because it's like, I think that, that thanking, like being able to thank your followers and, and thank the people who host you is important. Um, <clears throat> so thank you to everyone who has followed me and, and hosts me on a regular basis and all that. I really appreciate it. Uh, and I try to do the same back. Um, but it's just like that constant flow of like, breaks just throws me completely off it prevents me from from completing thoughts which is unfortunate um it's the same with the music like i love music i love listening to music when i write but at the same time like i don't need it to write and it just it pulls me deep into the zone and when i'm deep in that zone i can't i can't interact i can't interact with my chat in the way that i think is valuable so i don't do it um i'm I will consider that thing. I have considered it before and I, and I kind of toss it out, but I'll revisit that idea of having music like playing where I can't hear it. Um, that is something that I, that I will look at and revisit. But part of like, part of what um, I've seen a couple other streamers do it specifically Numa the Nami, aka Kenji, where you know he used to play music all the time, and now he doesn't because he doesn't want his vods to be muted and whatever else. And I kind of agree with that, like because of what I'm trying to do with my YouTube uploads and all that stuff. Like that will all be recorded in the stream, and that just creates copyright issues in general, which sucks. No, no, I appreciate, it. I appreciate, Eric, I appreciate your input for sure. And when I say revisit, that doesn't necessarily mean I'm going to do it. I just, I like revisiting ideas all the time. Like I like going back to things that I've decided didn't work and seeing if maybe there's a new way that I can make it work because time has passed, because things have changed, because there's a new software that's been developed. Like there's lots of things like that that happen. Um, yeah, and especially for me, like, VOD muting is not as much of a problem as a visual artist when, you know, people can see your brushstrokes, people can see what you're doing in a lot of ways. Whereas for me, if I'm trying to explain why a character is doing a certain action, like that's not immediately clear necessarily just from the visual text. And that sucks. Uh, it's just really unfortunate. So, yeah. But I, I actively encourage you, um, and it is something I'm thinking of making a, a bot reminder for, but I actively encourage you to listen to your own music quietly in the background. You know, that's, that's kind of one of the other things that I thought a little bit about is that, you know, I can play the music I like, and I like a variety of different types of music, 
but there's always going to be those people who are just like, oh, this music sucks or this music's really good. And like, you know what I mean? Like there's that, that weird balance. And I don't know. It's just one of those things that my stream will definitely be that one that's like, everyone's like, oh, your music sucks so bad. <laughs> All my mods will complain. It'll be terrible. Um, but yeah, listen to your own music. Listen to what makes, what stuff you like. Um, we're all different. And thanks, Erica. I'm, I'm glad you appreciate it. Um, I spend a lot of time in my own head. <laughs> Which I think is understandable, considering what I do. Cool. I open that video and I'll look at it later when I get a chance. You didn't stir the opening. Of a crevice. Carboner, like, it's inspired by Carboner Brute, right? And, like, Carboner Brute always has the coolest videos. Like, that Cthulhu video is the best. I loved it so much. Uh, what song was that, Sam? Can you like that in chat? That was a cool video. Inspired by the, the shadow over Innsmouth. Oh, it's a Carpenter Brute. Yeah, okay. But where's the video from? Is the video one of the, is someone's video? I'm confused. Explain this to me. <laughs> yeah, Escape from Midwich Valley. I'm a huge HP Lovecraft fan. You can see my, my giant HP Lovecraft book right up here. Uh, pointing, pointing on a camera is hard. It's over there. There we go. <laughs> Am I in BC? No. I live in Ottawa. So I am the furthest thing from BC, or pretty close. Not quite, I guess. Okay. Thank you. That, that's what I wanted to know. I mean, it's not like PEI far, or Nova Scotia far. Well, yeah, yeah. They're a little bit further. It's all good. 
Allison lives in BC. I don't know where in BC though. I just know she lives in BC. Pretty sure Vancouver. My Canadian geography knowledge. Geography. Yeah, good job, Erica. You know you know you know more provinces. You know uh you actually know provinces. <laughs> And you know where they are located. See, like, look at that. I just wrote Erica when I wasn't even thinking. Like, this is this is what I mean. I just like things happen. Um, Stop that, Sam. Stop that. I mean, he's not wrong. That is the one thing about the streaming setup with the lights and the computer and covering up the window and everything. Yeah, it's nice and cozy in this room. Just, just, I'm like kind of warm. <laughs> Yeah, no, I hear you.
want to like get too far into this encounter because I want to jump to the flashback sequences. Uh, so I kind of want to give us like that movie style, um, that movie style opener, like almost like your, uh, your cold open where, you know, you, you sort of set up the plot of the, the episode and we're like, Oh, there's a mutant and it's chasing him and whatever else. And then it, you know, gets to this dramatic point and then it cuts to the cuts to the opening credits. And we get our like two hours before <laughs> two hours earlier or two hours ago. Oh, actually, um, the one thing I will test, I just want to show you guys because it's new and fan well, new and fancy because I've changed my cameras now since I got my new camera, uh, which is sick by the way. Um, but yeah, this is my desk. I have this nice micro de what's called a micro desk. Uh, it's just a thing that goes between your monitor and keyboard so you don't have to bend over in order to like write. I really like it. It really helps my back like a ton. Uh, I've noticed so much less stiffness and weirdness because of it. You can see my mixer down there to your left. Would it be to your right? No, it would be to your left. It's to my left, anyway. <laughs> uh, so yeah. Um, I just wanted to see what the other mic, like, what do you guys think of this other camera? Does it look good? You have a little desk on my desk. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's exactly what it is. It's got a nice little lip here so you can hold books and stuff. But yeah, I just wanted to check out the second camera scene while it was live just to to see if there was any weirdness with it. I think it looks pretty okay. The nice thing about the uh, the switching the cameras is the one I'm using now for this is a much uh, narrower field of vision, which I like. And the Brio is like, oh man, it's a nice camera. It's just like the color definition with the HDR and everything is just so nice. Like my wall, you can actually see that it's blue. <laughs> like a blue gray, it's not like a it's not like a, a like weird light light gray blown out thing, which is super nice. I also fixed all my overlays or all my setups. So they're not all weird and slightly different. <laughs> they're very standardized now, which is nice. So when I click on things, it just fades the parts that are not weird. Like before, um, my camera was my cameras were slightly positioned differently, so if you faded between the scenes, like the camera position would shift, and it was really odd. <laughs> oh, I have not thought of that, Sam. I have not tested it. That is a really good question. I suspect it's still not great. Um, What did I do with my other camera? We can do some neat things because I have three webcams because I'm a weirdo. Boom, look at me. There I am. Uh, 
Yeah, don't don't matter. We're just gonna do this real quick for fun. Blow this up. Yeah. So this is my office, but um, this wall here, see this nice fancy wall? That is a whiteboard. I put whiteboard paint on it. So uh, I can actually dry erase all over it. I've used it in a couple of my older videos, uh, if, if you've been around for a while. But it's pretty neat. Anyway, uh, my original plan was to use it as kind of a background for my stream with my old setup. And uh, I like that a lot. But uh, lighting a whiteboard without proper space to do it is so difficult. Like it's unbelievably difficult. You need like four lights and you need like like a full room so that you can set them up really, really far back so they're not getting crazy reflections and it's just really difficult. I will test it out though. I'm gonna add that to my list of things to do off stream. Speaking of things I did off stream, I actually started catching up on the website again, guys. Yay, progress, doing things. I've not tried it, I will. That's a good, very good question. Cool. I think we're going to jump to the next scene now. I think that's a good spot to jump. I think I actually earlier would probably be better. Like actually this might. Yeah. Jump here. Let's do that. Come on. Why won't you let me switch? Um, yeah, okay. So this will be Number four. I'm just going to take a sec and rename these so we actually know what's going on. See, I even put it in the wrong spot. This is why we label things.
here at Rome. Uh, technology. I like how it does that when I don't want it to do it, but when I want it to do it, it doesn't do it. I suppose that's always the way, isn't it? What? What, Robin? What are you talking about? Oh, hey, Stardew, right, gotcha. Okay, um, I'm gonna take uh, another break and I will see you all in a bit. Um, yeah, that was another hour, which is shocking to me because it did not feel like an hour. It felt like 15 minutes maybe. Oh my God. But yeah, no, we're getting stuff done and that's good. And we're having important conversations. So that's also good. Yeah. Keep it up guys. Keep it up. See you all in 10 minutes. <laughs>